Microsoft is saying 93% of all ransomware incidents could have been avoided if the victims would have thought about privileged access and lateral movement earlier. So the question is, what is privileged access and lateral movement and how to avoid them? We would like to talk about today how we are preventing customers or how we're preventing um, uh, attackers from accessing customers and moving laterally through their environments. We have established a managed service for that that we call Managed Red Tenant. And in order to show you what that is doing, I want to talk about first a analogy that shows you um, what is happening in the physical world in this area. So let's imagine a burglar that is breaking into a house and he is taking a stone and throwing it into the window and he is then accessing the first room. But probably he will not find what he is looking for in this first room. He will instead move laterally through other rooms and then finally somewhere find what he is looking for, some valuable things like gold or jewelry, and then he will be uh, going out and take it away. The same is happening uh, in the IT environment. So, for example, customers have uh, published services like Citrix or web servers or VPN services to the outside world. Or, the classic, they receive, their users receive phishing emails, um, they click on and then somebody, an attacker, could execute code on those machines, either on those servers through so these uh, external remote uh, services or on the client machine and then the attacker could execute some programs that he wants to on these machines. Let's imagine the attacker is taking mimic cuts or some uh, familiar tools, some, some similar tools. He could then access other uh, credentials that might have been locked on to the system. Um, and with these credentials that he has taken then from the, for example, the uh, memory of the system, he could log into other systems and with that move laterally as our burglar in the beginning of our uh, example and then uh, go to the next to the next hop and to the uh, Active Directory domain controller, for example, or to some other places that are valuable for them. So what's the problem here? The problem here is that we are using the same system for surfing the internet, for receiving emails, for taking teams and chatting with anybody and receiving attachments. And we are taking the same system to go to a Azure portal or go to a Office 365 portal with our global admin account. And this account and these credentials are then also living on this machine. That This is the problem why the attacker in this case could have taken over those credentials, use them and then move laterally through the systems. So Mark, Thomas, what do we do in order to avoid those situations? So we have designed uh, the managed red tenant uh, with two deployment options for secure endpoint in mind. So as you already said, it's very important that privilege access will be um, made from a separated, fully separated device. In this case, uh, we strongly recommend to have a privilege admin workstation, PAW, in place for your high privileged uh, users like the global admin, domain admin. And in this case, we also like to avoid that there will be no further uh, administration from the Office PC. So conditional access will block any privilege access to uh, the privilege interfaces like the Azure portal or security portal. And the PAW will be only used uh, for this privilege access. So their productivity workloads stay on the Office PC and only the privilege access will be made from the PAW and their authentication and force the use of FIDO2 security keys. And that brings the benefit of a full separation and we go a step forward. We have a fully separated tenant in place, the red tenant, and uh, this uh, allows uh, us also to have a fully separation in the device and identity management between the resource tenant, so your productive workforce tenant, and a fully isolated tenant environment that hosted the sensitive uh, admin workstation, the privileged users, and so on.
But on the other side, uh, we get the feedback from customers um, that uh, providing a hardware, separated hardware for admin can be a tough uh, thing because uh, nobody likes to care with a second device. Uh, and if we are talking about lower privileged roles, like a landing zone owner in the Azure environment and so on, maybe you need a more scalable solution. So that's the reason, reason why we designed the virtual access workstation. Uh, the VAW is a solution designed based on Azure Virtual Desktop. And we are um, also blocking any privilege access from the Office PC uh, to the Azure portal and other privilege interfaces. But of course, you need the connection point to uh, the VAW, and that will be made from the Office PC. We have uh, adopted the latest technology by Microsoft with the Global Secure Access Network. So Microsoft Entra Private Access is in place to have a secure access to Azure Virtual Desktop. Azure Virtual Desktop will be not publicly available, only through this Global Secure Access. And that allows us to have a pre-authentication by um, taking all the conditional access uh, conditions and controls of the Office PC and having also the change of the identity because after the uh, hardened uh, conditional access policy has been uh, satisfied for private access, there will be the identity switch to the privileged user by using a FIDO2 security key so that we have also phishing resistant authentication. In the end, it's not so secure like the uh, hardware isolated endpoint, but it can be a great trade-off and um, maybe a good solution for um, your uh, other admins um, that have um, yeah, lower privilege than a global admin or a domain admin. And this is just um, one of the aspects of our solution manager at Tenet. As you can see here, um, the endpoints, of course, are an essential part to get um, access to managing your cloud or an on-premises infrastructure. But over the years, we, as Kanya, has um, learned a lot from uh, engagements and our uh, blueprint in workplace Azure and security. And we bring everything together in the solution manager at Tenant, including a fully uh, managed um, tenant environment defined as code. So everything what we like to manage here is uh, written down in Terraform. And for us as security guys, it's really important that we have additional signals and opportunities to identify unusual access path. So our idea is sharing the signals between the RET and the resource tenant to um, yeah, make uh, visible that we have uh, uh, some um, yeah, unauthorized access path. And by having the strict access from the PAW, from the red tenant, that is the only way to, to get privileged access. That's uh, some good options for signal building. Absolutely. Yeah, we hope you have enjoyed our short overview of the managed red tenant. If you need more information, please follow this link, follow this QR code.